All right, it says it's recording. Um, I know some teachers are doing mandatory meetings at certain times on Zoom, and they're doing it for particular classes. Well, what I decided to do, this is more, this is supposed to be online, and online classes don't have to have um, meetings at certain times. I'm scheduling three or sometimes maybe some weeks, four meetings a week, and they'll be at different times. So Monday nights, we're gonna have the meeting here at seven. I'll have the other meetings will be day matching times for my day classes. And it's optional whether you show up, barring technical difficulties, we are recording this. So I'm gonna post it and then you'll be able to go and go up on YouTube and see it. I think I've sent you the link to the playlist for the first, with the first one, but I'll send you everybody a link to each of these. So you, if you don't, and I know a lot of you that are the night class, you can't actually attend the day ones, but you can go and watch the replays. I had hoped for more questions to be posted ahead of time, but I didn't get any, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, does anybody have any questions to begin with? No, sir. Okay. What I ended up with, the last thing I did with the uh, Zoom session the other day was we had started, I introduced them to lists. And if you've ever done arrays or in Excel, you could set up data where you did a column of data, you could think of that column of data as an array. A list in Python is very similar to those arrays. It's a group of data that we can refer to under a single name. One of the differences between Python and most languages is an array in Python can have all different kinds of data. So I could create a list and I create it by putting things in square brackets, but I could mix numbers. I could do three comma and then in quotes, bill, and it doesn't matter single or double quotes, comma, 4.7, and I can have that mix of data types. I don't recommend it. It's generally not good to do. Now, there are some times where it will make sense when, if, if at the end of the semester we get to reading files and bringing in, say, CSV, comma separated value files, we'll bring each row in as a list and then process it. Most of the time, you want that list to always be of the same data type. So if you've got a list, you want it to be of a, a single data type. And hold on a second. And I just realized I hadn't shared my screen, so you didn't see what's on my screen. So hold on a second. <clears throat> I am bad about forgetting that. There we go. Um, it's, I, I did that in the engineering programming class too. I, I started talking about things and typing in and so they said, we can't see your screen. So here you create a list by putting the items in square brackets separated by commas. So I've got here at the top, I created a list three, five, seven, 11. As I was saying, I could create a list, say list two, and I can mix it. Three comma, bill comma, 5.7. And so that list would have different data types. There are times again, that may make sense, but most of the time you want the list elements to all be the same data type, whether it be integers, floats, and mixing integers and floats is not a big deal, but 
mixing strings and integers and floats can be because if we decide to do math on it, we run into a problem. And this is one we did, this, this was the last one we did the other day in the uh, day zoom. So if you've watched that, you've seen it. But if I run it, the first one I printed the list, notice when it, if you print the entire list, it puts the elements in square brackets, just like you created it. <clears throat> I've got in, I can change an element of a list. So here I said list one of element two, they're indexed. Remember how we index strings? The first element of a string. It's working again. The first element of a string is index zero. So the three in this list, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. 11, the three is element zero. The five is element one. The seven is element two and so on. So when I tell it list two equal 13, it's going to replace the seven with 13. And when I ran it and I printed the list again, instead of one, three, five, seven, it's three, five, 13. I can do math when I replace it. If I say list two equals, or list one of element two is list one of element zero, in this case, the three plus 22, it makes that element be 25. So I can, I can change elements in a list just by referring to their index value. If I want to add to the end of a list, I can append. So if you do list one dot append and put a value in, that will add that value. So the list afterwards has now the 99 in it. If I want to print a particular element, a single element, if I set print list one element zero, that printed the three. Then the last thing was a question I had from a student right at the end. Uh, after the append, can you append a list? And I showed what happened with you when you append a list that way with the append. And we ended up with a single element added that is itself a list. So in addition to mixing data types, you can have a list that contains another list or a nested list. Now, I, I did say that later, which we may get to tonight, I'll show you how to append, actually add a list together to another list. So those were the basic things dealing with a list. Um, Mr. Perry, could you please scroll back up? I'm, I'm working on something, but I will post these Understood. files. I, you know, I, Understood. I, Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So any questions on accessing an element of the list or appending an element to the end of the list? Okay. You can... And let me go back and get rid of a bunch of this for this new one. You can also insert something at any position in the list. Now, if this list is very, very large, this can be slow. So if you insert, instead of appending, appending is a rel relatively fast process. And if I had a list of a million items, appending it is quick. Inserting is slow because it actually has to insert it into it. But I can do, instead of append, I can do list one dot insert. And then where I wanna insert, so if I wanna insert it at location two, comma, and then what I want to insert, and I'm going to do 77. So this should insert a 77 at index number two, 
and should shift everything, the seven, nine, and 11 over one. If I could type. And so you see that the 77 is now in index position two. So you can insert a value into a list. Don't recommend it most of the time because what it ends up doing is in a very large list make, making things run slowly. Now, if you want to add a list or in, uh, add a list to the end of another list, you don't append, you use the extend. You say extend, and then I give it a list. And I'll do 22, 33, 44. So I'm gonna take list one and I'm going to extend it or add to the end of it those three elements. And you can see that here it added those elements to it. So you can, if you want to add a list to another list, you can extend it. Any questions there? Yeah. If the list is numeric, there's a couple of things you can do with it. I can find what the minimum and maximum values of that list are. So if I tell it to print, <clears throat> min of the list, It says three, and if I look at this list, three is the minimum. It turned out that that was the first element. Let me change that so the first element is bigger. So five should be the minimum when I run it this time. And it is. Well, if there's a min, there's a max. And you can find out how many elements the same way we did with a string with the length. So if I run it now, the max was the 333. The length was nine elements. So the, the length function works not only with strings, but it also works with um, lists. That length function will also work with tuples when we get there and with dictionaries. The max and min will work with tuples as long as they're numeric. <clears throat> Questions on that one? You have a question on chat. Can you see that? Uh, no, I've not got my chat showing. Let's see if I can All get right. my. I'll just go ahead. When I share my screen, my chat disappears. The question was, um, you know how we have uh, Im import math or whatever? Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you use the mode or mean function with a list and have it pull out the mode and the mean? Both systems, man. Yeah. You should be able to. Uh, with the math functions. I would need to look that up to make sure, but it, I, I believe that works with lists. Uh, yeah, once I share my screen, my chat goes away. If I unshare my screen, then I see my chat again. So that, I if, if anybody knows a way to fix that, let me know. But as soon as I share my, share my screen, even though my little window with you guys is on the other screen, it still minimizes it 
maybe some point I can find a way to get it. You can keep you can pop out chat as its own window and then drag it to your to your other screen. Okay, so let's see. I hadn't tried that, so let's see. Yeah, and you'll see a pop out function. Uh, yeah, where is the pop out function? Uh, top carrot. You see the down carrot beside Zoom group chat. Yeah. Oh, that. okay. There we go. Ah, uh, thank you. You are welcome. There, now we go. All right. Now, there. If we're dealing with lists, th those are very common with numbers. Let me go in and let's create another list, and let's do create a list that has some words in it. And if I don't put them in quotes, I'm going to get in trouble. And I could pull out individual items in the list. So if I wanted element two, if I told it to print index two, that would be Joe. No different there, but there are some things that I can do. And I can do these with numeric lists as well. I can sort a list. And there are a couple of ways to sort the list. One way of sorting it actually displays it sorted, or you could copy it into a different list, but doesn't actually change the list itself. So if I were to print li the list, then I use the function sorted, And then let me print the list again. The sorted will not change the actual list. So the, the list before the sorted function, Bill, Mary, Joe, at, when I, ran the sorted function inside the print, Alan B, 